how reliable are weather forecasts? You might have thought that someone would have compared the different models of forecasting to, to establish which was the best, but it would seem that no scientific comparison has been done. The BBC's weather test hopes to address that. It's taken some time to get off the ground. The different parties involved have been wrangling for months over how best to compare forecasters, but it seems they have now agreed the ground rules. Well, Roger Harabin is our environment analyst. Well, I, see, I find it rather surprising that somebody hasn't looked at the different ways, because there are many different ways of trying to work out what's going on. Well, is that sort of question, actually, that gave birth to this idea? Because I asked a couple of years ago uh, for a comparison of the Met Office seasonal forecasts with other forecasters who claim to be better. And I was told, actually, no such comparison exists. I asked why not and was told that, well, people had tried it in the past, but actually it was difficult, technically difficult. And I said, well, it's ridiculous, you know, should be able to sort this out. Anyway, two years later... <laughs> <laughs> you know why. <laughs> two and years why later, is it? We, what, we, what are the problems? Well, it's, it's just been very technically difficult. The statistics are very difficult to work out. Sometimes you appear to be comparing apples with pears. There's been disputes about whether, you should, whether we should measure sunshine, whether, whether we should measure fog. That was proved too nebulous. Sorry, it's bank holiday. Um... Uh, and we've come down in the end to, uh, to, to measuring temperature, which is, which is easily measurable and very difficult to have arguments about, and rain and wind. Okay. And so we'll be, we'll be testing one, three and five day forecasts and seasonal forecasts. And we hope now the next stage is to persuade the various people who we'd like to test to actually agree to take part. But at last now, the science is done. So, so you've effectively said, look, these are the ground rules. These are the rules, yeah. But you need, now need to get everybody to sign up, and not everybody has. Uh, well, I mean, we haven't formally approached anyone yet. We've for informally been talking to the Met Office and others over the very long consultation period, because all this has been very open. We've had two public meetings, a lot of public consultation. The Met Office have been very supportive, but have consistently said that they do not want their seasonal forecasts to be measured because they say they're embryonic scientifically and they're not fit to be measured. Now, the case of the people who are running the, uh, the weather test, which is, is run by BBC News, but uh, technically it's being done by the Royal Meteorological Society and Royal Statistical Society, their argument is actually we will not know whether forecasting is improving unless we measure it. Even and if it is embryonic. Exactly. Therefore, it's the benefit of science, and we hope that the okay. Met Office will come around. Now, you say the Met Office, but, but most people might be thinking, well, if you haven't got the Met Office, who have you got? Uh, well, we haven't got anybody yet because we haven't formally asked anyone but yet. But who are the other players? Well, the other players are we, we'll be asking an American forecaster, quite a controversial figure called Joe Bastardi, and then other commercial forecasters in the UK, Meteo Group, Metro, Positive Weather Solutions, and also Weather Action, the, the, the latter one run by Piers Corbyn, is kind of maverick weather forecaster, climate change sceptic, who's already agreed to take part in every part of the test. OK, and what do you hope to end up with? Well, what we hope we'll end up with is they'll all say yes, and they'll all say yes to all parts of the test, and then in three years' time, uh, after the launch, which we hope will be in the spring sometime, we will publish the results of the 135-day forecasts. So you'll be able to say, you know, can, can I trust the forecaster if they say it's going to rain tomorrow? How much can I trust them? And then in five years' time, because we need more statistics, we hope to be able to publish the results of the seasonal forecasts. But, you know, this is, this is the last hurdle. We've come a long way. We're not quite there yet.